all right welcome back everybody today i'm going to teach you guys how to tie one of my absolute favorite stone flies and i call it the silly stone it's crushing browns and even some rainbows for me lately so we're just going to jump right into it today i'm using a 2.5 mil bead and a size 14 jig hook i'm using vivis 140 thread and i'm just going to fire it up chuck my hook and bead in the vise and start a little thread dam right behind the head here this is going to help secure my bead in place and it'll also give me a place to start tying in the rest of the legs. I usually run my thread back to about the beginning of the hook, maybe a little past it, and then I'll trim my tag end. Once I get that tag end cut out of the way, I run my thread up and down and I create a nice smooth taper across the whole entire body. Next, I'm going to select my leg material. For today's video, I'm using Montana Fly Company centipede legs. I've got a speckled olive color. They look more gray to me, but olive is what it says on the package, so we'll run with that. I'm gonna pull out one, and I'm going to measure it by the bars on the actual leg. I usually run about three bars, and then that's where I'll tie it in. Now that I've got my legs measured, I'm gonna advance my thread back to the center of the hook, and I'm gonna go ahead and lap over one leg two times. After that, I'll fold the rest of the leg over, cinch down the other side, and then you're ready to trim. In my opinion, it all goes downhill from here. Not actually, but I'm really bad at tying these legs in. So I'll take that scrap piece, fold it over in a U shape, and I'll get it going on to the actual body. Normally, I try my best to point the rear legs slightly upwards and have them a little bit more close to each other and then with the front legs after I cut the loop open I usually try and kind of point them off to the sides almost like a like a man raising his arms up into the sky because he's so excited he just caught a massive trout so now that your legs are tied in the next thing that I usually go for is cleaning things up so by this I mean adjusting your legs getting them to point where you want and then sometimes the leg material itself will actually kind of bulge up and poke through the thread personally i don't mind this because i think it adds a speckled look to the body of the fly and normally stoneflies have that speckled look so i leave it i personally think that it just looks a touch more natural and in my opinion that contributes to catching more fish even though it probably doesn't next thing i'm going to do i'll grab my hairline crystal flash i got a pearl color you can use any brand, any color you want. This is just my choice. I'm gonna feed the crystal flash into the back of the bead and then I'll make a few tight loops to lock it in place. Once I got it secured, I'm gonna pick up my crystal flash and I'm gonna wrap it around the body three to four times is usually the amount I do. I never go above the legs until I finish my four wraps and I go to tie it off. Once I'm ready to tie it off, I'll wrap it up to the front and then I'll go over it with my thread, cinch that down tight so I can cut it. Now that I got my flash clipped free, I'm left with just thread. I usually only throw two or three whip finishes on these flies because the UV resin does the rest of the work for me. So I'm going to go ahead, whip finish right behind that head. Now that I'm done with my whip finishes, I can go ahead and cut my thread loose. The next thing I'm going to be doing is grabbing my UV light and a small little bottle of resin. This is just a cheapo brand, but I'm going to apply a gentle coat to the back and hit it real quick just to lock everything in place. From here, I'm going to gently add to the fly and I usually try and create just a nice little oval shaped bubble back on the fly. The main reason I do this is because it almost magnifies the flash underneath it and gives it a really cool effect. I also like the way that the hard body looks and the added durability is a huge plus. One final step that you can go through and do is to trim the legs. I usually try and just make sure that each pair is the same length. I don't necessarily have an exact measurement that I go off of, but usually for the back legs, they're both right around three of those colored bars. And then the fronts, I usually try and make them a little longer and go about four or five of the colored bars. Anyways, there you guys have it. 
that's how you tie the silly stone pattern i hope that you guys can learn from this tie your own and get out there and catch some fish on them this fly has done excellent for me and i'm sure it'll do the same for you all right everybody i'm gonna crack a beer here got a, a happy dead lemon lime Thank you for watching, and if you would like to purchase any of these flies, they'll be for sale in a fly shop up down in Buffalo called The Hairy Trout. Follow him on Facebook. I'm going to be running an order of about 50 of these to him sometime in the next week or so. So you can find these there, purchase them local, and then obviously with this video, you can learn how to tie the fly. But it's a pretty easy pattern. It's been super effective for me lately, especially on the cat fishing for browns, but I know steelhead coming up, they love stone flies. So I'm hoping that we can get into some steelhead with them. And yeah, it's it's simple and super deadly effective. There's no reason to overcomplicate it. You don't have to worry about if the legs are all the exact same length, pointing the exact same direction. I don't get that in depth with it. Every one I tie looks a little bit different. That's, in my opinion, to an extent, you're tying for your own eyes more than the fish's eyes. So don't worry about it too much. Just bang them out, fill your box, and go fish. I'll be back next week with a new fishing adventure. We're going to try and get into some big brown trout this weekend. So in the meantime, stay fishy.